Alright, making a video. Yeah, walk and talk video. Been a little while. Anyway, um, this is general subject of perspectives. Modern mystic's word now is he likes it. Um, and this argument that somehow the, there's some legitimacy to this idea that there's all these different perspectives and that there's some validity to them or some reason that we must uh, indulge each other in this multi-perspectivism. <laughs> you know, we are not only have to respect idiotic cultural traditions that are barbaric, crude, and stupid, but somehow we must respect uh, plainly ignorant and moronic uh, compositions of <laughs> the narrative of life on Earth, and that this somehow this is all like some complex football strategy or some complex uh, puzzle that um, this is so difficult to uh, understand this life on earth game uh, you know just way too difficult way too complicated so many facts and so many different ways to interpret them and it's just no way to understand it and I'm mocking that, of course, because, yeah, I think it's as simple as you're knocking on wood and shit. It's, it's, uh, it's really not uh, difficult at all, uh, and there's um, very little room for squirming about choosing different um, perspectives, uh, different points of view as described or defined by um, ludicrous premises. Uh, say, God, for example. God is a ludicrous premise. It doesn't work on so many levels. It's moronic as a conception. The very idea of an uh, eternal being that's around forever who one day decides to do something. <laughs> yeah, after a trillion zillion years, he thought up, let's put anuses right next to vaginas. Yeah, sure he did. Um, that took a zillion years. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, and yes, I'll play some insidious crazy game where, you know, I create robots and then blame them for doing exactly what I programmed them to do. Uh, you know, and send them to hell forever uh, for the crime of doing exactly what I programmed them to do. Um, anyway, it just it's a ludicrous theory. It has no rational merit, no reasonable merit. It's not a reasonable description of reality. It's not a reasonable perspective. And the mystic keeps talking as if these ludicrous perspectives are somehow legitimate perspectives because it's all so complicated and all so difficult. And it really isn't. Uh, I mean, if we all just sit down and say, wait a minute, let's do this, uh, you know, logic thing, and let's uh, require each other when we say something to back it up with some sort of evidence, and then we'll say, well, you either did the job or you didn't do the job. Uh, you know, I mean, that's not saying, that's not asking too much, is it? Um, and let's narrow these perspectives down. Uh, so anyway, the perspective I'm arguing for <laughs> the, the narrative of reality, uh, yes, is evolution, the creation of a neural network that creates consciousness, which is a useful tool in a warrior game played by DNA molecules to get into the future, and that this tool of consciousness has incidentally created the most valuable thing in the universe, which is feelings. The feelings of a sentient being. And yes, it's a, there's nothing else. There's no, the spark and the leaves and the dirt and all this other crap. It doesn't mean a damn thing. The only thing that can mean something is it has to impact a sentient. If it doesn't do that, then this can all burst into flames and it just couldn't be, uh, it couldn't make a difference. It would be 
uh, a value neutral uh, choice and that the only thing that really injects some reason for paying attention is the welfare of the sentient organism and that's the big game we're in is in the sentient organism game the category of and uh, and then under that game there's these other layers of games you're playing uh, you know as the human game and the individual game of trying to get through your life making as little a mess as possible uh, which I don't really want to get to in this video but it's all very simple I mean in the end you're, what you're really trying to accomplish here uh, you know is to maintain some level of your sentient comfort and health uh, without taking it from somebody else who's going to have to be harmed to give it to you and yeah just logical uh, so I guess I should just point out I guess I have to write another little you know fact in my little fat book fact you know the, the fact book that says simple things like uh, you know conscious experience is happening uh, but one of the facts would be is that we can recognize it we can see something and we can recognize that it's having a conscious experience where it's going to be creating uh, positive and negative sensations we can recognize it we can acknowledge it's taking place that's one of our faculties and coming with what comes with that ability is the ought okay that now you have to pay attention to the economics of your existence and it all comes down to that in a sense that you know it's all going to be about these exchanges made value for value and once you've acknowledged that you know, rationally and logically, is there a is there really a counter argument to the theory that uh, my welfare, my comfort, is not intrinsically more valuable than another human being's uh, comfort? <laughs> you know, that's fundamentally the same fundamental mechanism. Uh, you know, that really just there's no reason for my brain to think there's some advantage in allowing harm to happen to somebody else uh, for my benefit is there really some way to make that rational to think that you can still profit in this game we're playing and with a rational perspective on what's happening it would be rational to think you could cause other people pain and that would make your gain still a gain it's still profitable <laughs> you know, you gaining at their loss is somehow in the real game uh, a successful move, something that could be considered um, sensible or reasonable to think you can win that way. That that isn't essentially cannibalism. That the, you can't win that way. You can't eat, uh, you know, value equal. Uh, you know, to your self, you know, to the value you're eating to preserve. You can't destroy something of same value as what you're building out of the parts. Uh, what was to put it? But, you know, this should require some sort of complex, difficult conversation. This basic idea that we're all individual sentients, but that we're in a game, okay, with other pieces of equal value in the game. And that you can't uh, knock the other pieces off the board and think it's any different than getting your piece knocked off the board. It's not rational thinking. You know, people. <sighs> and the dogs. <sighs> hey, pup. Mm -hmm. Tennis ball again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm gonna skip by you here. Okay. I'm running man. I am running man. Ugh, enough of that. Feels like work. Anyway. Uh, oh boy. <sighs> yeah. So really, this... Somehow we have to make some concession that uh, we don't have enough facts about biology, the geological history of the planet Earth, the uh, function in the cosmos of the creation of matter and its destruction, ultimately. That we really don't know what's going on here. That we don't know that we're just a manifestation of what happens when there's uh, no guiding force controlling uh, the replication uh, of a molecule. That this is what happens when it just starts replicating and can't stop. <coughs> uh, you know, that'll either choke to death on its overproduction or it will evolve an ability to constantly transition into new forms who can keep finding a way to eat the pollution of the previous models <laughs> keep finding a way to consume uh, the excess production uh, to create some notion of a uh, sustainability that's just maintained out of um, uh, rebound chaos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it burns down and it regrows and it burns down and it regrows. That's the game. And we're just part of a four billion year uh, cycle of create a new model capable of playing the game a little differently. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. And you can either do it in some sort of um, modest, uh, you know, efficient, economically efficient manner where you take little and give much uh, or not. And the logic of the economy just has to do with recognizing the fact that... Uh, the value is in how things feel. And if you make things feel like shit, uh, <laughs> you haven't won anything. You can't win that way. Because they're feeling like shit. It's just like you're feeling like shit. And uh, you wouldn't pay for it. You wouldn't do it if you had to feel like shit to do it. Uh, you know, if you had to... You know, if you, if you had to be the slave, you wouldn't be a slave owner. Duh. You know, not complicated. You know, this really doesn't require a whole... Gee, we have all these challenging uh, decisions and concepts to master. This really isn't challenging at all. This understanding where you are and what you're caught up in. It's not a challenging uh, strategic <laughs> mission to find the truth. Finding the truth here on this planet is not difficult. Especially now, after we have invented the microscope and the telescope, and uh, we've spent a while talking and using these words and figuring out how vacant some of them are and talking through the scenarios and the thought experiments we have uh, certainly plenty of uh, good cause to say yeah this is the picture we can draw it <laughs> you know we can draw the model and say yeah we've narrowed this down this is what was going on here and there isn't any grandness there's just this attempt to find a, a reasonable economy. 
and uh, you know, ultimately I said you can't do that but you can only minimize losses you can't create something called a real gain but anyway it really isn't difficult and I challenge these people who say there are reasons to have different narrative perspectives storytelling uh, to point out how any of these stories have any credibility because they don't so anyway enough of the video it's <laughs> actually kind of an off day kind of a blight of my existence it's off days anyway till next time